So I realize that many of us are going to get caught off guard here. And because of that, it's going to hurt. And as we get into this, you'll know what I mean later on. Obviously, there are many earth changes occurring. I'm sure we could all agree to that. The cause of these earth changes is important, but not the focus of this discussion. I want to discuss a very concerning change that I believe is being overlooked. And I do believe having a better understanding of this will help people to know what is happening when these changes take hold. I'm talking about our atmosphere. Do any of you have or have any of you ever had an aquarium? Well, when you set up an aquarium, you have to make sure there are no leaks. When you add the water, whatever you put in the water must be toxin free and be made in such a way that chemicals from an ornament or gravel doesn't leach into the water. The water has to be treated. It should be purified, temperature controlled, salt levels should be adjusted to accommodate the fish that are going in there. When you put the fish in, they have to acclimate first by floating the fish on top of the water so that the temperature can match up. Then the fish can go in. Even before the fish go in the aquarium, they should be quarantined to make sure they don't bring any diseases from the pet store into your home aquarium. Now the reason I bring this up is because once those fish are in the aquarium and have become acclimated to the water, sudden changes made to the water could agitate and even kill the fish. And that is the situation we are in right now with our atmosphere. Wherever we go, whether it's underwater or outer space, we have to take some of that air with us. Right now the atmosphere is changing, and it has been for quite some time now. And soon it will no longer be just a matter of bad weather, but a matter of bad health. You're going to feel it. Have you ever heard someone say that they could tell when a storm was coming because they could feel it in their bones? Ever hear that before? That's what you call changes in barometric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is another term. What this is, this is the force exerted by the atmosphere at any given point, the weight of air. With a barometer, we measure that weight in millibars, or millimeters of mercury. The normal pressure at sea level is 1,013.3 millibars, or 29.92 inches of mercury. When you have rising pressure, you have good weather. When the pressure starts to drop, it could be an indicator of inclement weather coming. The amount of moisture that is in the air and the altitude affect the barometric pressure as well. Now everybody knows that the body has to adjust to different pressure systems, right? You can't descend too fast in an aircraft because there are changes in pressure that will affect your body. You'll get sick. Just like if you were to surface too quickly after a deep dive. So. Inside your body you have pressurized systems and outside your body there is another pressurized system, the atmosphere. When those two pressure systems get out of balance, we feel it. In the form of headaches, in the form of joint pain, in the form of fluctuating blood pressure. And extreme changes can be deadly. Because of the gases that are in the atmosphere, and because of the sun, the atmospheric pressure changing is a big problem. Big problem. 
See, the ground and the top layers of the atmosphere are moving towards each other. And let's not forget, we live in between all that. So what's going to eventually happen is we are going to have low pressure systems increase because the atmosphere is getting squeezed. Barometric pressure is the weight of the atmosphere. Before bad weather, the barometric pressure drops. This lower pressure pushes less on the body, allowing for the tissues to expand. That expansion of tissue is what makes the joints hurt. It's actually inflammation caused by pressure. Keeping the inflammation down, stretching, keeping the body warm, this may help alleviate the pain, but you can't control the pressure of the atmosphere. It comes down to how healthy you are and sometimes where you are. Everything that is happening to the atmosphere is showing up in anomalies as of right now. So in other words, certain areas on the globe are having certain atmospheric anomalies where others are having different anomalies, as the Earth does naturally. The issue is when these anomalies are intensified, spread out, and lengthy. The atmosphere is also becoming very staticky, not just with static electricity. Static electricity is when you have an electrical charge buildup in an object that hasn't been discharged yet. I'm talking about radio static. Remember that fuzzy screen on the old tube televisions? Well, in that noise are frequencies that were emitted since the beginning of time. You know, with an old television, sometimes you can pick up old television or radio broadcast. It's sort of a natural cloud, like the one we use for the internet, except this is naturally occurring and can't be shut down. If we were all still using tube televisions right now, I think many people would be shocked as to the things that would come through on those sets. So, because the layers of the atmosphere are getting closer to the surface, that means lightning discharges increase and become more powerful. The radiation on the surface increases, the moisture increases, the heat increases, the levels of the different gases changes. The clouds change. They start taking funny shapes as if they're being stretched. By the way, how does a cloud fall out of the sky and move along the surface? Something to look into. Actually, check out the presentation I did on sky creatures. What happens to a creature like that when it is forced to move closer to the surface? I want to read something that comes from Rice University's open book text on anatomy and physiology. Narrow range of atmospheric pressure. Pressure is forced exerted by a substance that is in contact with another substance. Atmospheric pressure is pressure exerted by the mixture of gases, primarily nitrogen and oxygen, in the Earth's atmosphere. Although you may not perceive it, atmospheric pressure is constantly pressing down on your body. This pressure keeps gases within your body, such as the gaseous nitrogen and body fluids, dissolved. If you were suddenly ejected from a spaceship above Earth's atmosphere, you would go from a situation of normal pressure to one of very low pressure. The pressure of the nitrogen gas in your blood would be much higher than the pressure of the nitrogen in space surrounding your body. As a result, the nitrogen gas in your blood would expand, forming bubbles that could block blood vessels and even cause cells to break apart. Atmospheric pressure does more than just keep blood gases dissolved. Your ability to breathe, that is, to take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide, also depends upon a precise atmospheric pressure. Okay, so... Let's take a look at what they have to say about decompression sickness because this is actually something that we may have to deal with that could be easily misdiagnosed. So it is important that we know exactly what it is and the symptoms of it. Decompression sickness, DCS, is a condition in which gases dissolved in the blood or in the body tissues are no longer dissolved 
following a reduction in pressure on the body. This condition affects underwater divers who surface from a deep dive too quickly, and it can affect pilots flying at high altitudes in planes with unpressurized cabins. Divers often call this condition the bends, a reference to joint pain that is a symptom of DCS. Okay. In all cases, DCS is brought about by a reduction in barometric pressure. At high altitude, barometric pressure is much less than Earth's surface because pressure is produced by the weight of the column of air above the body pressing down on the body. The very great pressures on divers in deep water are likewise from the weight of a column of water pressing down on the body. In DCS, gases dissolved in the blood, primarily nitrogen, come rapidly out of solution, forming bubbles in the blood and in other body tissues. This occurs because when pressure of a gas over a liquid is decreased, the amount of gas that can remain dissolved in the liquid also is decreased. It is air pressure that keeps your normal blood gases dissolved in the blood. When pressure is reduced, less gas remains dissolved. You have seen this in effect when you open a carbonated drink. Removing the seal of the bottle reduces the pressure of the gas over the liquid. This in turn causes bubbles as dissolved gases, in this case carbon dioxide, come out of solution in the liquid. So, with this, you can see how the pressure of the atmosphere affects what is going on inside the body. They say here that the most common symptoms of DCS are pain in the joints, with headache and disturbances of vision occurring in 10% to 15% of cases. Left untreated, very severe DCS can result in death. Immediate treatment is with pure oxygen. The affected person is then moved into a hyperbaric chamber. A hyperbaric chamber is a reinforced closed chamber that is pressurized to greater than atmospheric pressure. It treats DCS by repressurizing the body so that pressure can then be removed much more gradually. Because the hyperbaric chamber introduces oxygen to the body at high pressure, it increases the concentration of oxygen in the blood. This has the effect of replacing some of the nitrogen in the blood with oxygen, which is easier to tolerate out of solution. The dynamic pressure of body fluids is also important to human survival. For example, blood pressure, which is pressurized exerted by blood as it flows within blood vessels, must be great enough to enable blood to reach all body tissues and yet low enough to ensure that the delicate blood vessels can withstand the friction and force of the pulsating flow of pressurized blood. I want you guys to keep these things in mind as we go through the upcoming seasons. Don't be worried, just be aware. Knowing these things is vital when other people who experience these things won't know what's going on, and their leaders won't tell them. Until next time, folks, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Keep the knowledge flowing in. And as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe. And I'll talk to you all soon.